Hello, hello. Greetings from San Francisco, California. My name is Fatih Koja, and I'm working as Director of Analytics Strategy at Mixpanel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about one of my favorite topics, measurement strategy, specifically measurement strategy for software as a service businesses. Like any analytics process, Let's start with the question, why effective measurement is important. First, as the old analyst proverb goes, what you measure grows. It doesn't grow by itself. It grows because when we measure, we focus. When we, when we focus, we are able to understand the user behavior, the user actions, the why behind those actions better. And that understanding enables us to take the necessary tactics, actions, and strategies in order to improve the product experience, in order to improve the user experience. Next, we have lots of metrics, but not all metrics row in the same direction. Our conversion might go up and retention might go down. What we are gonna do? What KPI we are gonna be basing our decision on? Conversion or retention? Next, as Nobel laureate economist, Ronald Coase really well put together. If you torture the data long enough, it will confess to anything. This basically means we sometimes don't use data to make the most effective decision. We use data to prove our point and we use the, that part of data, that metric that proves our position most. It might be a cognitive bias, it might be a, a bad employee. Last, Data galore. We have data flowing from everywhere. Different data sources, marketing channels, product, customer service, online, offline. So data is abundant. It's a hot topic, but it can be a hot mess if we don't apply effective strategies. So how we can prevent that, how we can prevent that mess, uh, that ineffective use of data. Basically, second question, how to measure? Enter frameworks. Frameworks are really effective tools to simplify complex ecosystems, complex things. It can be city planning, it can be analytics, measurement, data. In my role, I have the opportunity to work with various customers in different industries. After helping tens of them to build, to devise their data strategy, to devise their measurement strategy, I decided to publish a book to uh, scale that my perspective, to, uh, to provide my perspective at scale uh, to uh, various product managers and, and marketing managers and any product stakeholder. And measurement framework is a key part of that book. The measurement framework I built after ha having discussions with uh, so many customers in different industries, building different products, is um, as in this slide. It is a top-down view on product health measurement. Starts with a focus metric. This is the metric that matters most to your business. I avoid using the term one metric that matter or North Star because they have the connotation of there's only one metric that matters for the business, which is totally wrong. We should have different metrics to measure different parts of the user experience exhaustively. So we have level one metrics for that. We have one metric for reach, the user base that has acquisition and retention, retained users. One metric for activation, 
that measures the effectiveness of providing great first-time user experiences. One metric for engagement, we want more users and we ideally want them to engage more. And one metric for retention, more short-term retention. We want users and we want them back next day, next week, next month. The framework does not fit all businesses. Every business, each business is unique. So uh, for that reason, we have one bucket to put business specific KPIs. KPIs that are really important for that specific business case, for that specific product case. After identifying and establishing that level one uh, metrics, we need to go down, uh, one level down, and identify level two metrics, which becomes more tactical, which becomes more granular. It can be level ones broken down by platform like iOS and Android, region like US, EMEA, APAC, segments, high, medium, low value users, or feature. Let's see an example for a SaaS business, which is a simple business, simple uh, SaaS business, that's only action, or only key action is enabling the users to submit a form. So we want all the users to submit a form every day. So a good focus metric for this business could be weekly active users. And active here is users who submit a form, not the users who just come to product and do nothing or do uh, the things that we don't necessarily want them uh, as, as, a, as a key action. So after uh, establishing key focus metric, we, we go one level down and we pick one metric for reach, which is the user base. The user base here is quarterly users because for the specific business, if a user did not use the product for three months, it becomes dormant. There's no way, there's little less probability that the user come, will come back and continue uh, to continue use the product. So uh, a user who did not use the product for more than three months is similar as uh, a non-user. So uh, reach should have a time period limit, a time threshold. Uh, so quarterly users is our user base, our user base that we can activate every week, every month, every day. It is our ceiling for weekly active user metric. And we should ideally have two components of them um, uh, in a healthy way. One, acquisition, new users. One, retained users, existing user base. Users who have been with us for like years, for, for quarters, for months. Second metric is activation. Again, this is a metric that captures the effectiveness, the, the health of first time user experience. Here, um, percentage of new users who submit three forms in one week could be an activation metric. If we think it indicates long-term sustainable growth of the business, if it indicates reduction, the, the reduction in the possibility, the probability of churn for users. I assume uh, many people have uh, heard Facebook's uh, famous 10 friends in seven days, sorry, seven, seven friends in 10 days activation metric when they established um, in the beginning of um, their, their uh, high growth phase um, back in, I think, 2009, 2010. So uh, this metric is basically makes sure that we are giving a good first time user experience to users. Next metric is engagement. We want more weekly active users and we want them to engage more, to do more key actions. Here, number of key actions per user, number of uh, form submissions per user at weekly level could be a good, good, good engagement metric. Retention is straightforward. We want users, we want them back next week. So what percent of the users come back next week and become an active user again? Last one, business specific metric. This is a B2B business, it's a SaaS business. Ease of use is important and we can measure that ease of use by time to submit. The time that a user spends from landing to product 
to submitting a form. We should ideally reduce that time that uh, users will spend less time on our product uh, trying to figure out where to, where to click, what to, what to input. So the idea here is establishing a top-down framework to have a bird eye view on the product success. When we have that, next step is identifying owners for each KPIs. High-level KPIs can be owned by execs, product leaders. Lower-level KPIs might be owned by individuals, people who are doing hands-on work. That way, they can work on improving those KPIs and we can have a bottom-up improvement. When we have an improvement in L2 level KPI, L1 will improve, focus will improve, and the, ultimately the business, the product is gonna be improving. Third question, we asked why it is important, why effective measurement is important, uh, how to measure, and third question, what to measure. Measurement should start with strategy either product strategy or business strategy. And we should have top-down um, perspective on measurement that starts with the strategy. KPIs should be picked based on what we want to accomplish with the product, what value we, we provide, we communicate to our users. Here, KPI is key performance indicator, and performance uh, is pretty much the measurement of our long-term strategy. It can be revenue-based, it can be cost-based, it can be um, user-based, but KPI is not the same as performance. It's the indicator, it's the short-term indicator of the long-term performance. Third, we will have metrics um, to enable more ad hoc analyses if there is uh, something wrong, uh, so something really good, uh, something different in, uh, for in, in, in different KPIs. So a KPI might be retention, a metric might be click-through rate, number of page views, time spent. Last, the foundation, events, tracking, the, the raw data, and ideally it should be based on the metrics uh, that we want to track in the business. So strategy, KPI, metric, and event is uh, the approach on what to measure. How we can turn this from theory to practice? We need three things after establishing the KPIs. First, champions, owners. Someone who will be accountable for that KPI. Ideally, um, that person will constantly come up with ideas, with tactical bets, with product feature uh, development ideas to improve that specific KPI. And when we have an improvement in KPI, uh, we, will have, we will see bottom-up improvement in high-level metrics and uh, in the business. Second, as lots of you might know from New Year resolutions, when we set goals, we sometimes don't hit them, don't meet them, but sometimes we hit them. At least we work towards that. That's the key. When we set goals, we will constantly work towards me meeting those goals, hitting those goals. And goals will also establish alignment across teams to work together, to achieve, to accomplish together. Third piece, visualization and democratization of data. Uh, all product stakeholders are in the same ship. And it's so important for the people in, the, in that ship to know the direction of the ship. So we need to measure and surface and visualize our level one and focus KPIs to entire product stakeholders, that they should understand what is the direction of the ship that we, they're going. This can be an executive dashboard that uh, product execs, business execs, and also uh, pretty much like all product stakeholders can check every day. 
Second, more tactical uh, team dashboards. This is more like that specific components of the ship. How uh, healthy it is. Ideally, individuals and teams will take tactical bets and uh, come up with ideas to improve those level two, level three KPIs. Um, and when we have that, we will have bottom-up improvement. So it's, import, it's really important to enable the democratization of those tactical KPIs to the people who are responsible or who can affect, who can impact those KPIs. Thank you very much for listening to me um, and have a good day.